This is going to be a really quick tutorial on the D-plier package by Hadley Wickham. Uh, so the package has been out for a while now, so I know a lot of people have seen it in action already, but it's just so easy to use, I thought I'd put together a short video for people who might not have tried it out. So I'm going to start with this vague question, uh, but um, it's something I'm interested in, and so uh, this is a nice opportunity to explore some data. Uh, so I'm interested in... Um, at what age do Major League Baseball players reach their home run hitting peak? Um, and so in order to explore that, I'm going to go ahead and load a few libraries and um, just do one basic merge here to kind of get us, get us set up with some data. Uh, the dplyr library is the one I'm really interested in. Talking about uh, the ggplot2 I'm going to use for data visualization. And then the data I'm actually pulling is from the Lawman library. So this first command is just going to merge together two data sets that are in this Laman library. And uh, to show you uh, the data, let's just take a quick look. There's a lot of information here, so it's going to kind of spread out a bit. But um, each row in this data set is going to be um, a set of uh, batting information at the player year level. So you can see that um, I'm, I'm only looking at the first six rows of the data right now, but I've, I'm observing the same player uh, for a bunch of these years. And then um, the master data, which I've merged in, um, has a lot of demographic information. So uh, to go ahead and start with the dplyr tools, um, one kind of cool new innovation is rather than working with data frames, we can work with data tables. So with this big.df guy, um, now that I've saved it as a data table using this table df command, if I go ahead and type the name of the object, um, I get this nice kind of clear, concise summary where I only look at enough columns as will fit in the console, and I'll look at the first 10 rows. Um, if you try to do this without execu executing this command, R is just going to spit out this huge set of information, which is, which is really annoying. Um, so, okay. Now, let's go ahead and uh, try using um, the piping commands, which is um, kind of one of the coolest features of, of the dplyr package. So, I said that I'm really interested in age. Now, unfortunately, age isn't in this data right now. So, um, first, I'm going to start by just restricting attention to a few of the variables. So to do that, I'm going to use this select uh, uh, verb, and I'm just going to write out the names of the variables I'm interested in keeping. So here, I want to know the player's ID, the year that we're presently talking about, um, and then I, I have birth year information from the master file, and then I am interested in home runs, so I'm going to keep those uh, variables. Now, if I execute this, you can see that I'm just restricting myself to those four, which is really nice. So, um, now I said that I was interested in age, so let's go ahead and try to create that as a variable to add here. So to do that, I'm going to use this mutate verb, and um, I need to give my new variable a name, which I'm just going to call age, and while it isn't the best measure, um, I'm going to um, measure age by finding the current year minus the birth year. So let's see how the data look when I add that. Okay, great. I can see that the ages are about what I would expect, so, so that's good. Now. Um, before we keep going, I noticed that there's an individual with an observation here where he doesn't have um, uh, a, a legal value for home runs. Now that, that might be for a lot of reasons, and um, it's a little bit uh, uh, slipshod to just, just eliminate all of those missing values, but that's what I'm going to do for, uh, for simplicity here. So I'm going to say, only show me observations where the um, uh, the home runs are not missing, and let's go ahead and do the same thing for age. Now, okay, um, once we have this uh, relatively clean data set, um, we could definitely do more to clean it up, um, but, but let's keep going. We can use the group 
by verb uh, to tell R that we're going to do a calculation um, that we want to carry out at the player level. So because I'm interested in when players reach their home run hitting peak, what I want to do is calculate for each player the age at which they hit the most home runs. Now, since that's something I want to group at the player le uh, level, I'm going to use the group by command, and then I'm going to use summarize to actually carry out this calculation for each group of, um, of observations. So here I'm going to, I'm going to make this variable which is, um, let's call it top home run age. And here I want R to tell me an age um, where the home run variable um, takes on its maximal value. Now, as I've defined it here, I'm actually just going to get a vector of ages. And so, um, again, this is kind of rough, but um, in order to make sure I only get a single value for each individual, I'm just going to ask R to tell me the first uh, age that I get among this group. Now, a lot of players, um, this is going to return a unique um, age just on its own, but this this last bit just just make sure that 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 that's the case. Um, you know, it's it's a little little slipshod, but um, but but it'll work for our purposes. So here, when we execute all of this, we're going to get this um, top home run age, which we're going to observe for each individual player. So this is really great. We're we're getting closer to uh, this question that that we're actually interested in. So now. I can go ahead and again use this uh, piping operator to send this to ggplot2, and uh, this dot just specifies like uh, uh, it, it's telling R to use uh, this data frame or this this data table rather that we've kind of piped along, and I want to put um, top home run age on the x-axis, and I'd like to create a histogram. So I'm going to say geom histogram. Now I, I know that these ages are going to be discrete and so um, sometimes you get slightly better behavior if you wrap factor around this. Uh, you wouldn't necessarily have to but um, let's try taking a look at this. Okay cool. So now it's a little bit difficult to see so I'm going to zoom in just a bit. And when I do that I'm seeing results that are um, uh, sort of what I expected. So I see that um, most players, or the, the modal player, is having his biggest home run season when he's about 25. So that, that, that's interesting. Um, now, there's a problem though with the way that we've done this first cut of the data. A couple problems actually. So one is um, this, this bit right here where um, if the data are arranged in order of age, then we're going to split ties um, uh, uh, by youngest age. But that's, that's not a huge problem for our purposes. Um, potentially a bigger problem is that um, if a player isn't performing very well in the major leagues, uh, let's say he um, has a, a pretty bad season when he's 23 and another bad season when he's 24, we're just not going to observe him when he's older, even if he would have had a bigger home run hitting season later on. So one way to get around this problem is we might want to just look at individuals who are in the major leagues for a certain number of years. So we can totally do that. We can kind of modify this code that we've got so far. So one thing we can do is um, at the... Um, at the player level, I'm going to add another variable. So I'm going to uh, uh, use the this mutate command, and I'm going to call it season count. And here, um, just as a rough measure of um, uh, how many years a player has been in the league, I'm going to take the present year of an observation, and I'm going to subtract the um, minimal year that I observe, and then I'm going to add one. 
so here, let's let's try just executing that much. So here you can see for this first player, um, uh, the first season that we see this guy is in 2004. Now we don't have an observation for 2005, which is a little bit worrisome. I mean, you know, we filtered out some of these observations, so um, it's not perfect. But um, uh, roughly this season count is giving us some kind of a sense of uh, how long um, it's been since each player entered the league. So that, that's, that's good. So then a thing that I can do is I'm going to, um, for each player, I'm going to create another variable, which is the maximum value of this season count variable that I've just created. So I'm going to call it season.tote is equal to max season count. So let's take a look at this. So if we make this viewing area a little bit bigger, we'll be able to see that last variable, which is another cool feature of these data tables. So this is good. So I'm seeing that um, the max for this particular guy is 7. Um, the max for the next player, uh, Hank Aaron, is 23. So, so this, is, this is going well. So then the last bit that I'm going to want to do is I'm going to want to filter to individuals where season tote is bigger than some value. So let's let's say 10 for now. And then um, I can connect to these uh, that, that same top home run age command that I added in earlier and then again down to the visualization. So let's let's see how things change when I do this. So remember that 25 was sort of the top year previously. Now if I look at this data I'm actually seeing um, a pretty different pattern, it looks like. So here I'm, I'm seeing that, look, once a player hits about 25 or so, um, we, see, we see this big jump up. And then um, it looks like there are a lot of players who reach their peak somewhere between 25 and 29 or so. So this is actually a very different answer to our original question now that we've now that we've just filtered to um, uh, players who we observe um, uh, over at least a 10 year period. So, so that's, that's, that's pretty interesting and I've got at least a rough answer to my question about um, kind of when this home run hitting peak uh, uh, ages. So roughly it looks like it's sort of 25 to 29, which is about what we would expect. And we can certainly get much more precise, but um, kind of the point of this tutorial is that uh, dplyr makes this stuff just incredibly easy. Um, and we really only used a few sort of verbs here. So um, using uh, the select lets us look at just a few variables. We use mutate to add columns to the data. We use filter to restrict ourselves to specific observations. Um, group by allows us to apply some function to uh, the data by some particular variable. And then um, in particular, uh, we can actually do that, um, uh, we, we can apply those functions by using the summarize command. And then um, again, using ggplot to, to summarize. So really this stuff is incredibly easy. Uh, for for really a, a wide range of uh, data analyses. So hope hope this helps. Hope this gives you a nice nice introduction to dplyr.